Praise Him. Thank you for tuning into this video. It is your girl, Alicia, coming to you with another video. Today's topic, we're going to talk about something totally opposite. Well, I'm not even going to say opposite. Inspirational, but to bring uh, to light, shed light on some things and situations. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the Kirk Franklin and Carry On Franklin situation. I want to say this to you. If you are in no place, which we all are not in a place um, to talk about other people's um, situations, I want to say this. Make sure that your house is in order before you get to talking about somebody else's information. Make sure that your mind, your mental state is in the correct place before you can actually listen or hear about somebody else's situation. Because what happens is if we're in a state of um, where we're in a place where we are already going through something, we become biased. Not only do we become biased, we become judgmental. And these are the things that we should not. It's a, it's a difference between righteous judgment and unrighteous judgment. And so I'm not passing judgment on this situation at all. I just want to share some light on some things as a social worker, as a counselor, <clears throat> excuse me, on things that I picked up in the spirit on this situation with uh, Kirk and Carry On. I don't get in nobody's business. Anybody who knows me personally knows that I do not get in nobody else's business. However, this is a situation that has come out before the public, okay? And this is not something that um, I'm, I'm saying that I know. And so um, this is just all um, on what I heard. And I'm not passing judgment on anyone because you without sin cast the first stone. The Bible clearly says that. And so neither, none of us is in a place to where we can pass judgment on anybody. None of us is in the place to where we can put a person in heaven or hell. So when we're taking on other people's information or doing whatever it is with that information, we have to be careful. Okay. We have to be careful because many times we get caught up in other people's business and it, it has nothing to do with us. However, I want to touch on this situation mainly because it was brought into the light. And so I heard um, Kirk Franklin and his son going back and forth. Don't mind me because I'm actually working. I have a business. And for those of you who are interested, I will leave the links um, down below um, this video to where you can actually shop with me um, if you desire to. Um, however, I want to talk, carry on. And Kirk Franklin got into a verbal altercation in which his son, Carry On, recorded him against his will, for one, and um, basically put it out before the world. As we know, Kirk Franklin is someone who is um, well known in the music industry, in the gospel industry, and, and just period. Everyone knows Kirk Franklin. He came and changed the dynamic of um, gospel. And so um, one thing that was kind of disturbing to me, and I'm just speaking from my point of view, this is all allegedly, okay? Everything that was said is allegedly now um, things that has exploded before the media. Kirk Franklin went off on his son, okay? He uh, was cursing. He said some things that maybe as um, a person who walks in faith should not say. However, I am going to say this. Kids have a way of pushing your buttons. They will take you there. And when I say take you there, you don't know the situation. You don't know what happened. You don't know the triggers. Many of us have to be cautious when we are judging or outside looking in. All we heard was um, the 
verbal altercation. It wasn't really a verbal. Well, it was. It was mainly Kirk Franklin cursing his son out. Okay. As we know, kids can trigger us. We birth them as women. Okay. I am a mother of four and I'm not by way saying that I am perfect in any way. I am not uh, saying that what Kirk Franklin said to his son and how he handled the situation is okay. I am by no means um, okay with that, okay? However, what I will say is that as a mother of four, I have a 23-year-old, I have a ninth, I mean, a 20-year-old, just made 20. I have a almost 18-year-old and a 15-year-old, and they will challenge you to the fullest. I have two boys and two girls. So I, each one of them hold different personalities. Okay. And so from just off of what I am hearing from a counselor's point of view, my thing is this, there are some underlying issues that carry on is going through. Okay. Many of us may not see it. I have heard several um, recordings of carry on. If you go out to his, um, Instagram page, you'll also be able to read and see certain things that he display. And I'm not by, again, not by any means saying that Kirk was, okay. I mean, was, this was okay that Kirk did handle this well, because Again, we're on the outside looking in. We don't know what was said prior to the recording. We only got a clip of what was said. And to me, it sounds like um, there is a lot of abandonment issues that uh, Carry On is dealing with. There are some jealousy issues that he's dealing with. He's not looking at the fact. And, and to me, I'm going to say this, there is, and, and to me, just looking on the outside, there is some mental um, issues that carry on is going through. We don't know if this man suffered from a deep depression. We don't know if he is dealing with some mental illness just off of what I've heard and what I've seen um, displayed in the media and uh, for the world to see the way that carry on handled this. There are some things that he's trying to do to bring his dad down I personally believe that this situation should have been handled privately. This situation should have been handled in a different way. And I think that Carry On probably thought that this would go in a different route, go down a different route. So he thought that exposing his father would be the best thing to do. Letting his father, letting the world hear his father again. We are on the outside looking in. We don't know what goes on uh, behind closed doors. We don't even know what transpired um, and be, from his uh, childhood up until his adulthood. And so one thing that I am starting to see is that there is a pattern that is taking place with Carry On. Carry On, um, to me, seems to have some abandonment issues, okay? For me personally, I have to say that I don't feel like Carry On has matured. He's still looking for his father to take care of him. And one thing that we must understand is that sometimes we can spoil a child. And, you know, we, we, we spoil them so much that we forget that we have to still um, discipline them, right? And I'm not saying that um this Kirk didn't discipline his son. Personally, I believe that Kirk did the best that he can. And as parents, we do the best that we can. It's like a cycle, right? Many times as parents, we break cycles or we follow cycles, right? If our parents treated us a certain way, when we have our own children, we don't want to treat them the same way. We want to do it differently. Or sometimes we do the same thing that our parents did to us, right? So we must understand that as parents, I mean, like parenting don't come with an instruction manual. Yes, they have parenting books, but it's nothing like 
okay, I'm birthing a child. Here's how I'm supposed to raise this child. Everything is by trial and error. There are a lot of mistakes that we as parents make. Why? Because we're doing this thing without instruction. We're doing this thing without a manual, right? We're, we're just doing this because we're going step by step as we, we're learning as we go. Okay. And so we can't sit back and judge Kirk Franklin based on his conversation with his son. Am I okay with the way he handled this? No, but I'm going to be honest with you as a parent, there are some things that I probably said to my kids that was not okay. I'm not perfect. Ye without sin cast the first stone. So we are not in a place to cast a stone on Kirk and carry on. <clears throat> We're on the outside looking in. We don't know. However, as a man of God, you know, like it was to me personally, there are different ways that this could have handled. But again, I mean, could have been handled. But again, we don't know the dynamic of the situation. We don't know if carry on threatened him we don't know if carry on cursed him out prior to because what you will find on the recording is that um carry on was laughing it was almost like he was edge egging his dad on to snap on him and in the process it was like it was premeditated to me it was premeditated. It was almost like, oh, let me get him in this space because I know he finna go off. He finna pop off. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to record him and I'm going to put it out there for the world to see. And so um, to me, that says a lot about Carry On's character. And if you listen to the recordings, to me, allegedly, um, he said that he said a lot of things. Now he's saying that his dad molested him. I'm not saying that it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. I have no idea. I know what I've been through as a child. And when you are molested or raped, sometimes it takes a long time for you to come out and say anything. So we are nobody to judge nobody. We don't know the story. We don't know the family dynamics. We don't know the family history. So we are in no place to judge nobody. However, Kirk was not okay with the way he handled this situation. But I am going to say this as a mother, there are some ways that I have handled situations because I needed to put my foot down. As a father, I've seen my husband have to put his foot down because kids will challenge you. So here's my thing. Carry on going against his dad's. Um, he didn't get the okay to record his father. So for one, that, that that's wrong. For two, to expose him before the world because you're mad and based on what I heard carry on say is that um, pretty much his dad is no longer taking care of him. He took care of him all these years. And now all of a sudden his dad is no longer doing anything for him. For one, you're 33 years old. You're a grown man. You don't need your daddy to take care of you. If you are many kids, I'm going to say this because even my kids to this day, I'm grown. You ain't grown till you get out my house. And even when you're grown, when we let go of the leash, and maybe I'm using the wrong word, but when we let them go to go and explore the world on their own, that's when you become grown. But if you're under my household, you are not grown. You may be grown in age, but you are not grown. You're not paying your own bills. You're not taking care of yourself outside of my household. And yes, Carrie may be out on his own, paying his own bills. But based on what I'm saying, I mean, I'm seeing there may be some issues with drugs or alcohol involved. His mental state is just is at jeopardy right now. OK, and so I want to say this, that when I post this video, please be cautious of how you judge other people because. You without sin, you cast the first stone. None of us is without sin. So we don't have a, a, a right to cast a stone on nobody. And so one thing I want to say is that the Bible says that the tongue is the most powerful uh, uh, tool on our body, right? We can cut somebody up. We can we can bless somebody with that tongue. We can we can just uh, tear them up, right? 
and destroy a person with our tongues. So we have to be careful of the way that we respond and the way that we react. Again, we don't know what happened with, between Kirk and Carrion for him to explode the way that he did. I'm not, again, saying that this is okay because it's not, you know, um, it's not okay for Carrion to have recorded his father and then to try to expose him. Do I think that this would destroy Kirk's career? No, I pray to God that it doesn't because we as humans, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. As parents, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. So I want to say to somebody who may be in a situation of dealing with someone who may be, and this is why I talk about who may be um, dealing with some issues, but this is why I'm so big on mental illness. This is why I have a passion for mental illness because you never know what a person is going through. In their mind, they may um, feel that they they have been shortchanged and, and everything else. When the parent has done everything that they can to help that child, to build that child, to help grow that child, to push that child, to become successful and, and the best in their life. But sometimes kids do not look at it like that. They don't see, especially if you have a mental illness that's going on, you don't see what the good that's coming out of your situation. Uh, uh, based on the recordings that I have heard, um, and, and I've heard his mom uh, talk about the situation, there have been some, he's been a troubled teen since he was a teenager. You know, he's been a troubled child. And so this is nothing new for them. But to see him go to this extreme is something different. And from what I'm understanding is that they ended up going through counseling. They they were going through counseling, but Carrion is not doing his part in the counseling. And he's blaming Kirk on saying that he's not doing his part. So there's a lot of blame and going back and forth. So I want to say um, to somebody, if you have a child who may be going through mental illness, um, a parent would try to understand, a true parent would try to understand their child to the fullest. They would support their child. They would do for that child as much as possible. But when you have a child who is struggling with mental illness, they don't always see what's going on. Um, they don't live in reality. Okay. Let me say that. They don't live in reality. They live in their own world, their own bubble. And sometimes you know, as parents, they become hard. It become challenging. We do everything that we can. And sometimes, you know, those kids, that challenged child will push you to the max, to where you will explode. So Kirk is human. He's not perfect. He has his flaws, just like we all do. Okay, so if we can do anything, let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will bring... um peace into that family dynamic. Um, Kirk came before the world and he did a public apology because he didn't expect that, you know, a child who have a mental illness will do things as uh, such, such as that they will record you. They will um, lie on you. I'm not saying that carry on is lying on his dad. Only God and them know the truth. And so that's why I said we're nobody to judge. Another thing that I heard Carry On say, he was on a recording, allegedly this was his voice. Um, he was on there saying that he was working for um, the Secret Services. This, again, this is a person who have a mental illness. And he was also saying that, um, you know, he felt like people was out to get him. His family and his friends was out to get him again. That's a sign of a mental illness. So we are in no place to judge anybody because mental illness, depression is a mental illness. And all of us have been through some form of depression, whether it was for a day, whether it was for a few hours, we all have a form of mental illness. Some are much more extreme than others. So I want to say this to those of you who are watching me, do not judge 
The Bible says that if you judge, you shall be judged. The same measure that you use against somebody else is that same measure that will be used against you. So I want to say this. If you can do anything, pray for that family. Lift that family up. Build that family. You know, like this could be your situation any day. Some of you may not have kids and one day you may desire to have a child and you may end up going through the same thing. Some may say, well, he's in church. He should know better. Yeah, we do know better, but we are human. We have flaws. We're not perfect. There was only one person that was perfect and that was Jesus Christ himself. So we're not perfect. Again, we have to learn to tame the tongue. Tame the tongue. I mean, again, you don't know the situation. Sometimes situations become so uncontrollable. You know, and we walk in the flesh. That's why the Bible says that we're supposed to always walk in the spirit. It's not always easy as a Christian to walk in the spirit. It's not always easy for us to uh, be righteous, righteous all the time. You know, we, we pop off sometimes. It's not uh, acceptable, but it happens. We're not perfect. See, here's the problem that I have with the church itself. People think because you walk with God, you talk with God, you, uh, you are in leadership, in a leadership position, you know, like you, you, you just a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, whatever the case may be. This is what I have a problem with. People think that because we are involved in church that we are not flawed. People think that we're perfect like Jesus. We can't make mistakes. That's the biggest problem with the church. We almost waste so judgmental. But here's my problem. If you can judge me, and, and don't that make you a sinner too? Because no sin is different than the other sin. So my thing with the church is we quick to judge pastors, preachers, leaders, teachers, apostles. We, we, we quick to judge people because we look at them, we put them on a high pedestal and we don't think that they're human. We're all flawed. We make mistakes. It's when we acknowledge that mistake and we don't make it again. Okay. So, or we make that mistake again and, and we recognize, Hey, this ain't right. Kirk Franklin recognized that it wasn't right. And he came before the, the people, the church. He came before the people and he apologized. He gave a, um, apology, a public apology. He was embarrassed by it, I'm pretty sure. Probably didn't understand or probably didn't even have a clue that his son would do this to him. Or maybe he did. But I don't think that he knew that his son would do that. His son did not tell him, hey, I'm recording this. Because if he would have recorded that, he could have easily said, I mean, told him that he was recording it. He could have easily said, you know what? That's against my will. I'm not okay with that. You know, that you're doing something against my will. But Kirk did not know. Again. This is somebody who is hurting. Carry on is hurting. So I pray his strength in the Lord. And, and I'm asking you guys to pray their strength in the Lord because families are not perfect. We all go through something. That's just like every person. They say every person have a drug addict in their family or somebody who have an addiction. I believe that 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 is true. You know, so we're, we're not perfect. We're flawed people. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. So I want to say, if you don't do anything else, offer a prayer unto them. You know, keep them in your prayers. You know, look beyond the person. Look beyond, I mean, look beyond the words and look at the person. Look at their heart, okay? Again, as a mother, it's not easy raising kids. If you're a parent, you understand. Ain't no child out here perfect. And if you think your child is perfect, you got another thing coming because your kid may be doing something behind your back that you ain't even seeing. So ain't none of us perfect. Ye without sin, cast the first stone. And so my thing is, do not judge. I pray that you, if you hear the recording, you listen to it, whatever the case may be, you, you, whatever, you search for it on your own. I just wanted to drop my um, thoughts on it because people was wondering, you know, like, what do you think? 
And here's what I think. Here's what I think. And so you without sin, cast the first stone. Until we meet again in the next video, God bless you. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Bye for now.